everyone pete brooker here co-host of from taylors with love the podcast i do with matt spacer uh this is just going to be some video that i did with bobby morelli taken from the podcast but i thought it'd be better to put it on the video as well so that you can see what we're looking at when describing the suits of daniel craig out in matera thanks a lot to bobby taking the time out to do that that's ace in fact as an exclusive matt sent me about 10 minutes worth of video just him talking about these suits out in matera last night so i'm going to bolt that on at the end but we'll put the bobby interview in first but very quickly before we get to that interview i'm going to show you what's new on the website now so from taylors with love here it is from taylors with love.co.uk yay wow. Uh, if you scroll down, uh, the latest blogs that we posted this week, one inside Spyscape, I'll post a video to that as well. Um, oh, why isn't that infogram? Here it is. Oh, infograms. I'm addicted. I'm addicted. So check out these infograms I'm doing. Yeah, oh, it's very good. If you check out this article, you can see inside the DB5 of Spyscape. That was the one from GoldenEye. There you can see the bollinger in the center console there so that's all up and running so where am i doing these infograms well i'm doing twitter polls <laughs> i'm so addicted to these twitter polls so head over to the website find the links to the social channels there and on the twitter i do these uh, i'm trying to do one a day and just asking really stupid questions it's, it's some fun for me at least facebook of course we're live there oh but screw it i'm back on the website Go back to the website. How quick is it? Ah, it's pretty quick. So if you want to go through the show notes, like the one that we did recently, the last episode we did about Frank Foster and Inside Frank Foster, you can go in there and see all the extra photos. <laughs> I tell you what, Matt Spacer and his Photoshop skills are just <sighs> another level. And the, they're the shirt patterns from Roger Moore in the 70s. Oh, this is the shirt that I've got on order with Frank Foster. That's the one that... Roger there, Warren, and live and let die. Anyway, so another infogram. God love my infograms. Oh, right. Okay, so that's the website. Go out there and have some fun. From taylorswithlove.co.uk podcast. How's that doing? Not too bad. Thank you very much. Nearly coming up to 27,000 downloads. Uh, everyone, you're listening. Thanks so much. I don't ever thank people for listening because there's so many podcasts out there. So many. Okay, quickly, a quick roundup of other news. Grey Fox Blog has done an interview with Turnbull and NASA, the new um, creative director, Becky French, I should say. So she's been appointed. She's saying that she's using a lot of Van Gogh in the new collections, or Van Gogh. No mention of Bond, but that's okay. Um, oh, Matt Spacer. Did a wonderful article on ties, bond ties, and I learn a lot from these because I didn't, you know, I didn't really know what the difference was between a lot of these ties, a rep tie, a, a fancy rib tie, but this actually points it out to people, and makes it easier to to know. Um, what else? Oh, uh, here we go. Um, I haven't had a chance to read this fully because it's quite an in-depth article. But over on the Gentleman's Gazette, I got sent this email. Um, he's done an article on. The Literary James Bond, How to Dress Like the Original 007, uh, by guest author. Hmm, hold on. What happens if I click on guest author? Where does that take me? No! Uh, guest authors. Anyway, so that's there. Also out, the poster for Knives Out, the new Rion Johnson film with Daniel Craig dressed in a green woolen blazer, looking like a very sexy geography teacher. The Trailer's out also. I'm definitely going to catch this on video. Whoa! And David Zaritsky's done a great vlog. So go check out David Zaritsky. You probably have done already if you watch these sort of videos. He's done a great video um, highlighting the heel of the Crockett & Jones Highbury shoe. Look at that city soul. Made for action, baby. Okay, that's it. Here's the interview with Bobby. Don't forget to follow him on Instagram. Matched perfectly. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you like these sort of things. I'll keep doing them. Buenos fotonos. Anyway, uh, I massively digress. So we touched upon the suits earlier that we're seeing at the moment. We've yeah. got, so we had the photo shoot, didn't we? Uh, that was in Matera. Yep. 
Um, yep. Remind me what Daniel was wearing, please, Bobby. I know he was wearing a, a Brunello Cuccelli. I, yeah, yeah. And it was kind of a, a lightish, uh, pale gray from, mm. from my memory. Um, um, and if I'm going from memory. Uh, navy kind of patterned pocket square that wasn't, you know, squared off like we sure. typically see Bond wearing. It's kind of puffed out a little bit. Um, and lighter, what looked like some sort of, I don't know if that's a, like a light suede boot mm. I, don't, I don't know if you're looking at it now yeah you know, it's got the desert I, I boot. Thought, yeah 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 i thought it was a very elegant classy look very italian yeah. look i thought yeah. yeah i thought i thought that looked like spot on with that beautiful background of matera and you know kind of with um carrie there and leia sadu there i thought it was very classy what did you think of that outfit so, i thought it was i thought it was spot on perfect so if i saw the outfit straight away and then i thought jesus christ that looks fantastic on him it looks really yeah. good uh i think it's a linen cut uh, linen fabric even I, right yeah I, I then so when you see it and you go right well that looks the nails you see carrie next to leia and you think christ he almost looks better than daniel in a way i know it's a contrast between the colors but carrie looked phenomenal in what he was wearing i know so i then yeah. start scrolling down through the comments and i don't know about you but i'm quite impressionable when it comes to other people's opinions so i i, sure. I see uh like people that i know like jonathan soft got going oh god no this is terrible you know he looks like a boohoo model um, well, he actually does. It's a very tight cut. You know, the trousers are very figure hugging. Yeah. The jacket is quite short. So, you know, it's hard to argue that it's still a very tight suit. And we thought we were perhaps getting away from that with the suits that we were seeing in London. Looks like we've maybe gone back to a, you know, a, a very suppressed look, as it were. Now, do you think that's going to be in the film, though? Or do you think that's just for the the, the, the press call? I, I've... I don't know. I think that would just be for the press call. I don't. I think so too. I, I don't think so too. I don't think that's going to be in the film. I I think maybe I don't even maybe he just like to mix it up because why would he wear the suit that he's wearing in the film to a press call? Right. Uh, you know he's probably I, sick of that suit already. He's going to be in it, you know, fourteen hours I, of every day in Matera. So we can probably you can debate the cut. Yeah, is it a little aggressive? Probably, but I think that that color scheme works better with with daniel and i think probably just location wise knowing what the climate of matera italy is like i think probably linen we can talk about this you know comparing that that corduroy suit i think that's probably a more uh situationally appropriate fabric yeah no absolutely don't, don't you think yeah no and and that's really what kind of lends itself to the climate as opposed to what we're going to be seeing in the film which yeah. is um, a Massimo Alba. Is, am I saying that right? right. I, uh, I, I was mid Matt space the other day. I said, have you ever heard of this Massimo Alba? And he goes, yeah. nope, never heard of it. And it's, yeah. so, this, so now we have uh, like a beige tan corduroy suit right. uh, with a blue Brunello Cuccinelli shirt underneath, which is buttoned down. And, and I'm, by yeah. the way, I'm, I'm referencing a lot of Instagram accounts that I see to get this information. So what's Daniel wearing? Um, Bond suits yourself. I, I imagine everybody else is following these as well. Yeah. But as much as I love the look, I think the look is fantastic. You have to question, he must be sweating away in that. You have to question the, the environment thing. that he's in with that, right? Yeah. And I, I the, the suit is, is cool. I think it's a thin whale, like 18 whale, very thin corduroy uh, jacket and, and trousers. Mm. Love the color. I think the cut looks great. That blue is certainly nice that's a nice contrast i think with the with the suit uh the tie looks fine but it's a it's a very you know that deep red it's mm. it's a it's a good look mm. i just don't know if it fits with that setting yeah and what's odd to me then what what struck me is really odd you start looking at things like you know he's wearing braces or suspenders you know for you know those of us here in the states with a, a corduroy um suit with belt loops mm. and i just started looking it's like that that's an odd choice to me and yeah. i think you know i i think like the literary bond for those of you you guys that have read that you know bond really is not too fussed about what he's wearing and what you know he, he honestly a lot of the times in the novels he's dressing for comfort mm. so to have bond wearing this suit and taking the time to put braces on mm. it just it just seems a little odd yeah to me. is that something that he would wear wouldn't it just be easier to throw on you know, I, I was I was going back and forth with John from Iconic Alternatives. Wouldn't just like a nice deep brown suede belt, yeah, of, you know, like call it a day. That would have looked a little better, I think. It just 
I thought that was an odd choice. I thought it was an odd choice too to have a, a button-down collar with the with the tie. Mm. You know, sort of like a casual look with the shirt and tie, but having the braces are a little bit more formal than a belt. I don't know. It's just sort of conflicting looks. What, what did you think of that? Do you know what? It's a good point. I hadn't really thought about it that intensely. Uh, do f- it's weird. You're right in one sense. I think Bond has much more of a casual approach. The character Bond has a more casual approach to what he wears. It does feel like this is slightly over thought for what Bond would actually do. Um, I don't really dig the button-down shirt with a tie look. It's not something I go for personally. Although, I then go back to the argument of looking at it and go, well, actually, it looks, it looks pretty cool. As a look, I still like the look. And he wore the braces in Casino Royale for the casino scene. And I'm just Agreed. thinking, and those are, is those it are more Albert appropriate first. to do something like that where the where you have a, a sit-down and it's more black tie than it is just walking around Italy kind of look? I think so. And I know those are Albert Thurston braces, both in Casino Royale, Skyfall, mm. and now in, in um, No Time to Die. And I have the white Moray. Uh, braces from Albert Thurston from oh, nice. uh, Casino Royale. And you should have been fantastic. wearing them just in your they're, t-shirt. They're, yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> they're, they're, they're great. They're great and they're they're beautiful and I know I'm sure people listening to this probably have those as well and they're fantastic but I just struggle to think like like a, like a personal choice thinking well I could wear a belt with this. They're belt loops. You know, when you're yeah. wearing uh, your tuxedo trousers there aren't belt loops. You know, the, yeah. the, the braces are the appropriate choice but you have belt loops on the corduroy trousers just a little a little odd to me. You know, I'm totally with you. I, I agree. And it, what is interesting, I mean, Bond would have had this tailored. So when I worked in a tailor's and you would ask the client about the trousers and how they wear the trousers, one of the questions that I always had to ask was belt or braces. And they would say, well, why? I'd go, well, because if you wear braces, we wouldn't put belt looms on or belt loops. Yeah, um, right. And they would go, oh, okay, great. And they would, but, you know, sometimes they would order both because they would like the option. So you have the optionality there. But if Bond was quite specific with what he wore, you know, he would probably just identify or distinguish one from the other. So, I agree. Yeah. Interesting choice. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to detract any from those scenes or from the movie. I just yeah. thought that was sort of uh, odd. And I, I would I would add, I really like the color of the braces. If you've seen those, yeah. like on what Daniel's wearing, separated out, that yeah. it's like a really beautiful like a steel blue, they a are, beautiful color. They are beautiful. Yeah, really, very, very cool. Um, I don't know if you follow Gray Fox blog as well on Instagram. I do. Yeah, um, I do. so I think he posted something this morning actually, and someone goes, "Hey, did you uh, <laughs> did you copy Daniel Craig?" And, he, and someone goes, yeah. "He's copying me yeah. all the time." So <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> but he's exactly wearing right. them braces, and it does. It looks it looks fantastic. Hey, Pete and Bobby, I'm sorry I couldn't be there to talk with you live, but I have been asked many questions about the clothes that Daniel Craig has been wearing in Italy for filming No Time to Die, and uh, they mostly concern the uh, Massimo Alba pinwheel corduroy suit that he wears and that the stuntman wears for filming. So I wanted to answer a few questions that people have asked me. So a lot of people have brought up about how the uh, how Daniel Craig buttons the top button in this suit. Because we don't usually see Bond buttoning the top button of his three button suits. We usually don't even, people don't even know that these are three button suits that he's been wearing throughout all of his Bond films because he only buttons the middle button and the lapels usually roll to the middle button. So that is called a three roll two. And it's a very popular style for those more in the, the know of fine menswear. They're not trendy like, like the two button suit is right now. But they are, um, they're considered very elegant. And that's what Daniel Craig wears. So, but because the lapel rolls over the top button, it's not meant to be buttoned. And, but we are seeing that here. And it's pulling the suit out of its uh, intended shape. It's, it, it doesn't look natural the way the top button is fastened. So he's doing that anyway. It could be because he's wearing some kind of harness underneath, um, either Bond himself. Well, probably not because we, we Bond is, doesn't seem to be doing that. But maybe uh, the actors, the the stuntmen, the, we're seeing some there's some action going on and that we don't really know. So there's something that he's hiding, and that's probably why the top button is closed. 
Now, the, um, the button-down collar is something that a lot of people have been talking about because it's not a particularly Bondian style, especially not with tailored clothing. Um, we've hardly even see, ever seen button-down collars on Bond, but we have before. In A View to a Kill, Bond wears two button-down shirts from his regular shirtmaker, Frank Foster, but he doesn't wear them with suits, no ties, no sports coats. He wears these shirts casually with a collar open under his leather or suede blousons. Uh, Bond has never worn a button-down collar in a more formal manner. Now, so for the modern English men like Bond, wearing a button-down collar shirt with a tie is really just not done. They were, they were popular in England with softer English suits in the mid-20th century. Um, you'll see a lot of people wearing them, say, on Roger Moore's TV show, The Saint. Roger Moore didn't wear them himself, um, except on maybe a couple occasions. But you would see other people wearing them. And so it, it, it's not a style completely unknown to the English, and it, it was invented in England. But it's, people now think of it as an American style. The, the English don't really wear them with their suits because the relaxed button-down collar does not match the typically more structured English suits that have a more military look. Now, a button-down collar could have worked for it with John Connery's more relaxed Anthony Sinclair suits. But in the 60s, the, the look of a button-down collar shirt with a uh, suit and tie wasn't really that modern. and They gave um, Bond a wider, more modern collar. So, you know, he didn't look like old-fashioned and uh, didn't look American because by then the, the look of a button-down collar and a tie had been associated very much with Americans, and that's really an American look today. And now some, some of the fashion-forward Italians might wear that. They might wear it even with the collar and button, as some have, been, have, have famously done. But I, I don't think that's really the look that Bond has, is used to wearing. But as, as, as you guys said, you know, a button-down shirt with a tie, it actually doesn't look bad with this suit. This is a relaxed suit, the corduroy suit with a, with a very uh, soft cut. So it, it fits, and, um, but it's still not the Bond look. I think, a, uh, I, think, I think the kind of shirt that he wore with his Brunello Cuccinelli suit in Spectre would have been great here. Now, so Daniel Craig is, himself is a fan of button-down collars. Well, he has been of, of late. So he might, it might have been something that he brought to the role, possibly the film's um, American costume designer might might like them as well, and maybe she wanted them to be featured in the film. We don't know for sure, but it's, um, it is something unusual that we're now seeing. Now, braces, on the other hand, um, I, I don't agree with you, Bobby, on that they're too formal. Now, we are used to seeing Bond wearing braces in the most formal settings. We see them wearing them with his uh, dinner jackets. He, he, wears, he wears white braces in The Living Daylights, License to Kill, Casino Royale, Skyfall, and Spectre. He wears these braces, these white braces are very formal. And Daniel Craig's uh, braces, they're, they're all the, the white Maury braces from Albert Thurston that, are, that have the, uh, the white braided ends. And those, are, those really have a formal look. But now these braces are more casual. These are, well, these can be worn with a suit. You would not wear these braces with a dinner jacket. You can wear them with a suit. You can even wear them a little more casually. They have um, brown leather ends, you know, the nice uh, dove gray color. They're very elegant braces, beautiful braces from Albert Thurston, but um, they are unusual for Bond. I think they work with this suit. I mean, people have always worn braces for all different settings throughout history. You know, we've seen uh, not not just with the formal wear, but people would um, also wear braces with work wear. Now they wouldn't wear these luxurious braces that we're seeing on Daniel Craig with work wear, but just because they are very nice braces doesn't mean that they can't be worn with a corduroy suit. And uh, now, a lot of people have also been talking about how um, they, th they say it's wrong to wear braces with the belt loops. Now, you can't wear braces and a belt together because they serve the same purpose. 
but it's not entirely wrong to wear braces on trousers with belt loops. It does look a little awkward to see the empty belt loops, but it's really, it's, it's still acceptable, especially because traditionally braces were not meant to be seen. So you, you, no one would even open up their jacket to show off the braces or the belt loops. No one would even know that the trousers have belt loops. Now here we do know, and it does sound like they're going to be filming with the Daniel Craig with his jacket off. So we will be seeing the braces in the film. But um, I think it's um, I think it just kind of shows that Bond might not be at his usual best or may you know, and that's very typical for Daniel Craig's Bond. And, you know, he might just be um out, out of his element here because he he doesn't seem to be wearing his usual type of suit in any case. Now maybe the braces serve a purpose. These braces might they might be a part of a disguised look. Um, may, maybe he's wearing the braces because um, they, you know, they're going to help keep his trousers up better in all this action. Maybe there's some sort of gadget hidden in the braces. Maybe Bond just thinks the braces give him a more distinguished look. He's, a, he's an older man now. So may, maybe he just thinks they'll make him look more mature and more fitting for uh, his age. Who knows? But I am excited to find out why the, uh, he is wearing braces. Because I think there has to be some reason. I don't think it's just the style. Well, that's it for me. I hope I was able to give a little bit of background as to what these cho clothing choices mean and maybe some ideas of why you might be seeing some of these unusual clothes for Bond in, uh, in No Time to Die. Mm -hmm.